whatever happened within the ceremony was to determine our fate. But I didn't realize this at the time. All I know is that when the ceremony was over, Don Alejandro disappeared. It was one of the elders, Rufino, who asked us to continue into the cave and who then led us deeper into this darkness. It seemed to last forever. Then a third time, we entered into a part of the cave system that had another piece of the ceiling that had fallen in, and a beam of sunlight revealed kind of a roundish room that was huge, but it felt cozy at the same time. What I mean by that is the room actually had these giant rocks in it all over, and when you were sitting in there, you felt like you were in a, a smaller part of the room. It was these rocks that also made me and others feel kind of peculiar. I looked around to a woman who was standing right next to me, and she appeared to be uh, deeply concerned about what she was seeing. She said to me, Drumvalo, look at these rocks. They look like animals and birds. These rocks look like they're alive. I looked carefully at one that was near me, and it looked exactly like someone had carved into it a six-foot iguana. It really did look real, right down to the tiny details. The rock underneath it hid the shape of a gorilla, and while the rock next to it appeared like a young male monkey. On the walls were human faces, Mayan faces that seemed to be emerging right out of the solid rock wall. And everywhere, every rock or wall was alive with something that seemed to be coming straight out of the solid rock. It took my breath away. I didn't know what to say to my friend as it, as it was very unusual. But I felt that she was, I felt what she was feeling. This was not normal. So not normal reality in this place. There was an energy that just permeated the very air we were breathing. Then I noticed that Don Alejandro, which who had disappeared before, was sitting on a small granite ledge about 15 feet up the side of one of the cave walls. My first thought was, how did he get up there? Because it just seemed kind of impossible. And it was the moment when our entire group was becoming aware that Don Alejandro was observing us. We all became quiet, waiting for uh, Don Alejandro to speak to us or to say something. Instead, he called for Rufino to climb up to him. He did so, but only so that his head was just level with this rock ledge where Don Alejandro was sitting. And then Don Alejandro reached into this rock ledge that was evidently filled with water and poured a handful of this water over Rufino's head. He did this three times. I had no idea what was going on. Then Tata Alejandro asked one of the world group to come up to the rock, and he performed the same ceremony with him. We were all just watching, you know, what was going on. Then he asked each one of us to come up, one at a time. At that moment, I'll never forget this, it was just like simultaneously we all knew in our hearts what was happening. Don Alejandro was performing a Mayan water ceremony on each of us. We were, being, we were being initiated in some way, and the energy of the room went deep inside of our hearts of every one of us that was there. Whatever Tato was looking for from us, he must have found it. I, I, I started to cry. I couldn't help it. Later, when we were back in a small Guatemalan town, about to have dinner, Don Alejandro, Elizabeth, his wife and Rafino were sitting at a table together, and they motioned for me to come over and sit with them. Don Alejandro looked into my eyes and said, and this is a quote, we have asked two other groups to come from all over the world to have, have this ceremony with us to complete our prophecy, but they could never pass the test that Pachamama presented to them. But I want to tell you now that this group has more than passed all of our expectations. You are the ancestors that we have been waiting for. I didn't know what he meant, but he began to cry, and Marfino also began to cry. And Elizabeth, in her female strength, just looked at me and said, Thank you. Please let all of the sacred group know that they are the ones <laughs> that we have been waiting for, and now our prophecy can be completed. This was all too much for me. I couldn't help it. I just began to cry, too. I mean, we, just, we just became a big table of babies. Now, it's 
change subjects here. The hidden positive side of the Mayan prophecy. The Mayas see that a long cycle is ending, both their 5,200-year cycle and the precession of the equinoxes at 26,000 years. And they predict that the old world, the one we live within now, is about to disintegrate from, from natural causes. This means that everything that we now know as normal will dramatically change. It is this part of the Mayan prophecy that the world is focused on. The idea that the poles of the earth are going to shift and humanity will almost be destroyed. It has even been termed, as we said, the doomsday of 2012. But at the same time, exact same time, a new cycle begins. And this cycle is an extraordinary one this time around. I was recently in Colombia in the Sierra Nevada mountains living with the, Cl the Kogi and the Arawakos Mamas. They believe that there are nine worlds all together. And yes, we are in the fourth world. That's what they believe, the same thing. And we will enter the fifth world, just the same way that the Mayans believe. And I said to them, so we still have five more worlds to enter to reach the highest level of consciousness. I'll never forget. They turned around, they all looked at me, and they said, no, you don't understand, Room Below. Everything in life is to achieve balance. The fifth world is in the middle of four worlds on either side. It is the perfect balance within the universe. There is no higher world. The Mayas say something similar. They say that the next world, which they call the sixth sun, is a world where humanity reaches a new level of consciousness and that we achieve this new level very, very quickly. As the new cycle begins, which also begins within the end of time, duality consciousness or good and, good and bad consciousness disappears and a unity consciousness becomes normal for hum humankind. The human ego no longer exists and we see each other as parts of, our, of each other, ourselves. In Maya, when they greet each other, they say, in Lakesh, which literally means, you are another me and I am in another you. This is a hint of the world we are about to enter. Further, the Maya predict that the human quarantine to this solar system that has, been, that has existed for a long time now will be lifted. And as it is lifted, humanity realizes that the stars and all life everywhere are interconnected in pure consciousness. Our human potential will reach levels that at this moment would seem absolutely impossible for us but this new humanity will become normal and accepted as the truth, according to the Maya. In other words, the Maya predict that humankind will no longer be involved in finance, politics, war, food, oil, etc., and that we will become one with the Creator and be able to manifest all things. We become co-creators along with the Creator. If this is true, then don't worry when you watch the movie 2012 showing the earth being destroyed. They are only showing part of the Mayan prophecy. Remember this time and remember the Maya and know that what is coming is beautiful and sacred, something to celebrate, celebrate and be grateful for. As Mara Baba once said, don't worry, be happy. This is definitely the best approach for life at this time. Breathe from your heart. Life is not what it seems not even close to what most of our parents believe to be true. We live in a dream that our mind is crystallized into what we call reality. We believe it is fixed and can only change according to the laws of physics. The Maya believe you will soon know a part of yourself that is so ancient that it goes beyond the stars and planets as fixed worlds. They are just a dream also, and just like a dream upon awakening, you realize that it was nothing but light, or better still, nothing but pure consciousness. Is it time for you to remember who you really are, which is far beyond a normal human being? And Lakesh. I'd like to, after reading some of them, and I, I can't even read all of them, uh, I'll, I'll do my best to try to answer these. Uh, there's a lot of questions here that have nothing to do with